Oh, Rob Venn here and today we're going to be looking at magazine design for Unit G321 Foundation Portfolio. Now, first thing we need to look at is we need to look at what the various elements of a magazine are. You're going to need to be able to name them. Now, not only have you got to be able to identify these when you're analysing your magazines, but you need to be able to describe what their meanings are. Why do they look like this? Okay. Um, we can have another look at the, um, the videos I've done on the analysis of the Record Collector magazine. But this one's going to look at the basic bits and pieces. So, what have we got here? This front cover of Enemy here. Right. What we've got here, this is the magazine's logo, its name. It's called the Masthead. Okay. Um, as you can see, it's always at the top of the page. It usually will stretch right the way across or it will be in the top left hand corner. Um, this is to do with the way that magazines are stacked on shelves. Um, they either overlap each other so all you can see is the top or they overlap each other so all you can see is the left hand side. That's called the left third. Um, as part of the masthead often you'll get the date. Um, this will often be replicated in the barcode or just be in the barcode. That's called the date line. It will tell you when the magazine was released. All these things on the cover here, these are called cover lines. And obviously they tell you what items are in the magazine, what stories, what artists in this case. Your images are called art. So your main cover image, this is your main piece of cover art. We've got your main cover line with subheading. Uh, this is called a pull quote. It's a quote that's been pulled out of the text. It's there to draw you in, to capture attention, to intrigue you, to create what we call an enigma, uh, a problem to be solved. Somewhere in the magazine, in this case down here, you've got a barcode. Um, notice how the barcode's got a big bit and a little bit. That's common of magazines. And in here, we've got a cell line. This one says the past, present and future of music. This is rather ironic, now it's gone bust. But it is there to help sell the magazine, to give across the magazine's ethos, its identity. And then down under here you've got the dateline again with the price and web address and some of other social media information. So those are the main elements you've got in the magazine. All the most important cover lines tend to go in the left third here because that's the most visible part of the magazine. So, magazine covers are obviously going to be very dependent on what kind of genre of music it is. Um, we've got Krang here, which deals with rock music. We've got We Love Pop, which obviously deals with pop. But even though they're very different genres, these two magazines are actually very visually similar. They both use this kind of like highlighter effect, these banners they're called to highlight text. They've got very similar use of serif, sorry, sans serif fonts um, to stand out. They've got, you know, typical kinds of shots. Both got medium shots of their respective artists, uh, both of whom are slightly covering up the masthead. So, surprisingly, considering they're aimed at, in many ways, very different audiences, they're actually surprisingly similar. These things here are called banners, or sometimes slashes, especially if they're an angle like this one. And they will are used to highlight your main pieces of text, your main most important things. There's another one down here as well, look. Um, you've got um, shout outs or uh, puffs and things. This is this kind of stuff in here or in here. Also, they put this in industrial patterning to make it look as if it's dangerous and threatening. Uh, notice how they've got, you know, the way in which the image is anchored by text. This is a theory from Roland Barthes, and it says that the juxtaposition, which means to put two things next to each other to create meaning, the juxtaposition between the image and the text creates a meaning. So we know that whoever this is is from the band Black Veil Brides because it's got Black Veil Brides written on him. 
we know that this is Zoella because it's got Zoella written on it. This is called Anchorage, you know, Bring with the Horizon, I guess, or whatever it might be, linked there. Okay, so very similar in many ways, even though they're very different genres. Um, you know, posters. One of the key reasons that people buy magazines like Crank, Teenagers, and plaster their bedroom walls in them. Exactly the same thing down here for We Love Pop. So as much as they like to pretend to be very different audiences, the generic conventions of these two magazines are exceptionally similar. Um, I particularly like the way they've done this kind of like highlighter effect on here with this orange to yellow uh, gradient. Um, that was really nice. Um, and I like the way they've also done the same thing on this text here where it goes from the pink to the orange. It's got a very summery kind of nice look to it. We replicated that up here and there masthead as well. Um, notice how you don't want to be using more than about three different kinds of fonts otherwise it will end up looking very cluttered. Obviously We Love Pop and Crown to a certain extent want to look cluttered. It makes it look like they're packed with information whereas other magazines might go with a very simple minimalist look. In both cases the name of artists are used to attract audiences. You might not read every issue of Krang, but if you're a big Biffy Clyro fan, you might pick up this issue just because they're in it. It uses terms to grab people's attention, like world exclusive. Everything you need to know. Yeah, um, Personal video message from Zoe. Little, where they put little things like plus to make it look like it's full of extra stuff on it. And they've got these little kind of things on it that look like they'd be goo um, doodled on there you know this kind of like reminds me of um, you know maybe someone's been you know doodling on their exercise book in school some magazines however go with a much more minimalist look um, much simpler but, um, but more stylish because it's meant to be more a stylish hip indie kind of audience um, so this is a much simpler look. Um, I like the way in which these banners seem to disappear into the red background. Um, again, XXL here, which is sort of like a hip hop magazine. Again, similar technique though. Look how they've used these banners behind the cover lines. Notice how the cover lines work. You've got uppercase in one font and a different color. And different size to this subheading which tells you what it's all about. Notice how this uses a, a drop shadow to make its masthead pop come out of the page at us. Um, underlining is a bit trendy at the moment with magazines. They tend to use a lot of that nowadays. I have a tendency to think it looks a bit untidy myself but it doesn't look too bad there. Notice how everything lines up neat and tidy. Remember we talked about how you've got to have inner borders? That's what that's for. Some magazines are more creative, of course. Terrorizer, which is a thrash metal magazine, looks obviously like it's been covered in blood. Tie that to the fact that this looks like it's a circular saw and looks like that has splattered blood all over the magazine. Um, I like the way Terrorizer looks again like it's made of metal. It's got a shiny effect on it which ties in with this and it ties in with his knives. Um, I like this one, Mix Mag. Mix Mag's a beautifully designed magazine, to be fair. Uh, very stylish. Um, the way they've done this sort of like electronic, almost like a circuit diagram kind of look, which ties in with the electronic nature of the music. Black and white photography to make it look very stylish. Very nice cover of that. Again, it's underlining thing, like I said, very in vogue at the moment. Um, again, look at this one from Q. I like the way they've wrapped the text around Noel's head, he's looking at it, it's almost like it's a halo as if he's something um, religious about him. Uh, obviously the who, look at the way in which the line of this sort of like draws your eye up here through the arrow and into that, suggesting the link between the classic mod act and the more modern antecedent. Yeah? Um, so that's nice, I like that. Um, look at this album magazine. This is Fault Music magazine. 
very very simple very minimalist very well the cover lines are quite small unlike these ones look at these shout at you so you can read them from a distance very simple this can get away with it because it has absolutely spectacular front cover photography having beautiful black and white photography gives you a visual style I like the way the masthead looks which means you can get away with it without being quite so cluttered as these other magazines look at these, these are really creative this is Plan B magazine um, from 2004 um, look at this, deliberately out of focus, deliberately blurry, deliberately cutting off her face I also love the way this looks like it's sort of like neon or something um, again look at this one really really nice photography which means you can get away with simple cover lines yeah um, I mean that looks like it's a mistake but it just looks so stylish um, it takes real skill to make something that looks like a mistake actually look good I mean these are good ones too careless talk cost lives um, again this by all accounts should be an utter mistake silhouetting your artist against the background like that I mean who is it yeah look at all the cover lines almost aren't that important almost hidden in the background but that is such a stylish cool evocative photograph that it you can get away with having a simple simple cover and again the keep it dark cell line ties in with this as well and again look at this beautiful Bjork picture which looks like it was done in I don't know watercolors or maybe even um, marker pen but again having a striking image means you can get away with simple text I love the way that looks again like it's been I don't know almost done in not even so much paint I guess I don't know what it could be done in but okay with pink the green go together really nicely so you can be creative if you do it carefully you can break the rules of magazines as long as you can show that you've done it deliberately and not through incompetence which brings me on to Ray Gun, the classic 1990s underground um, indie magazine from America, which just shattered the rules of magazine design. I mean, just threw them out the window. Um, I mean, text could be, you know, in some of the cases, very difficult to read. I mean, garbage, that's that brand there, so that anchors that. But look at those thoughts with number 57 Muse, Ick, and Style. Mass Eve, Attack, you know, Sean Lennon, Jesus and Mary Chain, Bernard Butler, uh, Lisa Gerrard, Lo Fi, oh, was it Low Fidelity, All Stars, yeah? It's actually that hard to read. But, astonishing, beautifully designed magazine, Ray Gun, well worth a Google. Um, shattered the rules, completely shattered them, but to brilliant effect. Now we've got your table of contents, your contents page elements. Um, up here we've got your date line again and your issue number. They've named this track list as if it was the back of a record. Notice how it's split into different sections. You've got your features, which are things that are unique to this issue. Your regulars, which are in every issue. Reviews, which is one of the key points of a music magazine. Um, this one does reader services as well, which is quite unusual. The banner down here, which goes in the colored box that you put text in. In this case, the web magazine's web address. Look at the way this is laid out. So this is your TOC, your table of contents, TOC. Now, we take these for granted, but when you think about it, there's a very distinctive way these are laid out. It's to do with juxtaposition. 28. When you think about it, what does that mean? We know it means page 28, but that's only because we're used to this. We're used to the conventions. Toya, 30 years in the life of a pop, pump, punk popette. Now, we know that that means the artist is talking about, Toya Wilcox in this case. That tells us what the article's about. And by juxtaposing it with the number, we assume that that article is on page 28. Equally, we can come over to here and we can look at something like 60, Psycho America, the drugs do work. 60, Psycho America. The juxtaposition of this picture of Pink Floyd with this text tells us that's where that article can be found and it relates to that. So these are very carefully composed. I mean, we take this for granted to the point we don't think about it. 
drawn lines like this are called rules so they don't get mixed up with lines of text um, but it looks all about juxtaposition that link to that tells us that that article can be found on page 60 okay and any pictures are called art this year is called an impressum sometimes called a masthead rather confusingly but it tells us who works on the magazine contact numbers who to get in touch with for advertising um, it's got all the team members on here what's in next month's issue quite often this will have uh, editorial letter a letter from the editor welcome you to that issue so again here we've got we heart pop and Krang and again look at the similarities <clears throat> despite being very different genres they've got a very similar look in this one case look what's inside your magazine um, on the cover notice it tells you where each of these stories can be found inside with the page numbers on them clever idea I like that here's your editor's letter exactly the same as this one look at the similarities picture of the editor your body text and then it's signed just like that is to give it a personal touch notice here and here we've got cover photo and contents photo credit so it tells us who took the photographs again we've got banners with the name of each section written in it separating it up it's done in columns the columns are separated by dotted lines or rules in this case um, again I like these little circles with stars on them that says cover story which is pretty much the same what this is doing here and here we've got captions which anchor the meaning of pictures I like the way that this slash has got slash written in it with an arrowhead on it pointing that oh look that slash where can I find him page 38 he's a cover star yeah I like this as well sort of like a taster of what's in the magazine this month or this week in this case um, notice how the cover, the contents page numbers are all the same colour and they use different fonts for different sections like that and that look so again very similar despite the fact they're aimed at very different audiences this one also I've got subscription information so where you can go to subscribe to the magazine this is Q again this is a, a slightly more arty look um, this one look goes onto two pages. Some of these magazines are four pages for the contents page, including the press them. Um, again, but look, sneak look inside. I like these circles with little arrows on them. They're quite stylish and all the different colours to give it a bit. Notice how the background is almost completely white. Yeah, it's called white space. This is, um, and the colour comes from these little flashes. Yeah, and these things here look. Yeah, notice how again it takes the masthead and it recreates it in here it's got the date line it's got contents written on it like that page one of two so you know that's page two or two it should be the other way around really shouldn't they this down here is called a folio it's the page number the magazine's masthead logo and date sometimes they'll put things like the a web address in here and again notice it's got photo credits running up the gutter I like this one. This is nice. I love the the way in which the background colours may sort of like reflect the green in the dress and they may really make her pop. She really stands out against that background. I like you've got this like little speech bubble thing coming out of her as if she's saying it. Um, you've got again nice neat features. Yeah, date there. You've got the pop the folio down here with the page numbers and everything this is mix mag again very nice look at the way they've got this really nice design for the numbers um, considering it's supposed to be sort of like some electronic dance music magazine this actually looks very sophisticated and stylish yeah I mean look at this guy here uh, was it Duke Dumont and his all right he's wearing a pair of high tops but he's you know really neat in his suit in his five-star luxury hotel yeah but again idea of what's on the front cover photo credits yeah very stylish magazine I like that look at this one from Mojo look at the way in which the text wrap around wraps around Florence Welch's body there yeah very nice very stylish again the gray background makes her red hair and her black outfit and pearls just pop so she really stands out 
Again, pull quote here makes you intrigued, makes you want to read further. Um, can't which magazine is from. I think this is from Plan B. Um, yeah, it is. Again, looks how it uses the same kind of font that it uses for its masthead here. But look at that, you could do that. I mean, yeah, this is quite sophisticated photography, but this is some guy with a guitar in his bedroom. Yeah? Notice how the empty white space here gives it a bit of a balance. Don't be afraid of using empty white space as long as you're doing it deliberately and not through incompetence. Again, photo credits, everything nicely, nicely neatly lined up. Different colours and sizes and fonts separating everything into these sections. Um, again, I like this one. Um, can't for the life of me where a magazine is from, never mind. But notice how this photograph has been carefully photographed to leave lots of empty negative space so you can put your text on it. Shallow depth field as well, so the background's blurred out. Very high contrast black and white, which is why it looks all grainy. Looks fantastic, I like that, it's really nice. And that balances that. So this can be pretty simple as long as you've got awesome photos. Talk about thinking outside the box, none of these are music magazines, but look how cool these are. This is from Wired magazine, which is a technology magazine, which is quite frankly one of the most beautiful magazines on the market. But look at how they've done it, this almost like grid effect with everything's coloured in. Um, not a spectacular, really, really nice design. And in this one from Squire magazine, look, they've taken slivers of artwork from each different story to create this composite image. Yeah, look at how they've highlighted these as well as they did with the highlighter pen to show that they're important. Um, beautiful, beautiful design that. And for really thinking outside the box, this has nothing to do with magazines at all. I just saw this thing where people were putting their CVs, their resume, on T-shirts. And it struck me, how cool would that be as a table of contents on someone's T-shirt, on a nice photo? You know, so if you really want to go for the high grades, think creatively. Get your artistic juices flowing. Think of something that's a little bit different. Break those rules, but show that you're doing it with intent and it's not just because you don't know what you're doing All right, double page spread designs okay um, this is from record collector magazine um, your left hand page is called the verso page your right hand page is called the recto page this is your headline which in this case stretches right the way across there this is a deck a deck is a little bit of writing which you can see is in a bigger font and a bit bolder than this and that tells you what the article's about so when you're flicking through the article you can have a quick summary there to give you some idea about whether you want to read it or not this tells you who wrote it that's the byline it was written by in this case John Draper um, another convention is you will often start your article with what's called a drop capital sometimes it's a huge it can fill the entire page you want to be really stylish um, sometimes the first couple of lines might all be done in uppercase for example but this lead which is the first paragraph of your article is in a bigger bolder font than the rest of the article and it's there to suck you in it's there to hook you to get you interested um, and it gives you a brief summary of what the entire rest of the article is about so this is your body text which is in columns in this case is a two column layout down here is your folio with your page number and the name of the magazine all of your art, yeah, not so it spreads across the double page, okay. Uh, but there are also other things to be thinking of. This band's called The Doors, a very famous 1960s band. Um, this article's about John Densmore. Well, which one's John Densmore? Well, that's him. How do we know? He's up here again, yeah. Riders on the oh, sorry, Rider on the Storm. Why that? Because Riders on the Storm was a famous Doors track. Um, it's suggesting that their relationship was fiery and stormy. Notice the way he sat behind this um, chain link fence to suggest this separation from the rest of the band. So it's all been very carefully composed to create the sense that he is an outsider. Other elements of double page spreads. Okay, captions. The job of a caption is to anchor the picture. The picture it's explained by this text, it tells you what it means. Equally, the job of the picture is to illustrate the article. This is a pull quote, quotes been pulled from the text, and 
it should be interesting or controversial or to anything that makes you want to read more three column grid this time your main article is called your body copy the gap around the edge is called your margin the margin on the inside is called a gutter the gap between the columns is also called a gutter this is your photo credit um, this little subheading here Ed, and this is a separate like sub article it's related to the main article but not part of it they're called sidebars because usually they literally run down the side and they're in a colored box this one isn't but it does the same job So, this is the kind of thing I'm expecting you to do. Look at the way this looks like it's being torn from a notebook. That's kind of cool. Again, this photo, anyone could do that. It's just a typical teenager's looking bedroom. Right? So there's nothing reason, no reason why you couldn't recreate something like that. Um, this is called a department head. It tells you what part of the magazine you're looking at. In this case, Radar, which is up and coming, you know, music and news. Um, this again has got a hand drawn kind of look to it, which is nice. This highlighting effect this is very common lately. Um, again, little plug there for the website, photo credits. This is a sidebar. Beautiful design on this one. This is from We Heart Pop. Um, you know, you know, really perfectly sums up the kind of music. It's you know, pink, it's very girly, it's feminine, it's got love hearts all over it. A pull quote, you know, illustrates what the article's about. Um, it's a sad fact that, you know, when you're looking at something like this, yeah, male artists, they're going to be celebrated for their artistry, for their skill, more than anything. Whereas the only thing anybody cares about Sarah Swift is whether she's dating anyone. Not that she's a, you know, a brilliant manipulator of her image to make herself a massive and rich star. That's obviously a clearly superb businesswoman. Um, whatever you think about her ability to sing. But, nope, it's all about who she's dating. Notice how the way in which the article is structured. Questions are bold and in pink. Answers are in a different font, different colour separates them makes it easy to understand that's the exclusive interview which is your you know your department head again use of color black background props costumes black leather jacket nothing says rebel like a black leather jacket yeah the cold eyes as in k-h-o-l not the cold um, the dog collar, typical punk rebel look. Okay, um, but again, because she's a girl, everything has to be in pink. Wild looks like it's been written in lipstick. Yeah, um, drop capitals. You know, pull quotes, folios, two column grid. But look at the picture spreads across, and the text wraps around it. Similar here. Look at how this text wraps around her guitar head. Um, again, this photograph's been deliberately taken, just like that one, to leave empty space, negative space to put your text into. Um, the spotlight's quite nice on that, it's a good, nice little touch. Um, interesting piece of photography, using a long exposure to blur all these lights to give it a sense of movement and excitement. Colour. I like that but they've used a black background and white text um, white background black text would not look as cool well it does make it harder to read and this is ray gun shattering the rules that's supposed to say sonic youth yeah photograph the band you can't even see their face they're even out of focus yeah the only thing that's in focus is the exit sign behind them yeah, it's sickly green, and look at how the fonts are all over the shop. I mean, it's not even the right, you know, format. Tons of empty white space. This is, you know, Reagan just throwing the rules out the window. Um, but really over the top way. So, 
just goes to show how creative you can be, but you've got to have to really justify it. Again, another one from Reagan. Look at the way they've overlapping letters. They've got rid of the gutters. They're using different fonts. They've got different size, you know, um, columns. Again, your photographs all blurry and out of focus, which gives it a kind of like exciting kind of action movement to it. Um, totally destroys the rules. You've really, really, really got to be good to be able to do that. Really good. But just to give you a bit of inspiration. So, that is a basic rundown on some of the generic conventions of music magazines. Obviously, if you read the handouts, you can get more detailed information. So, if you need any help, come see me, and I'll talk to you next time.